Please be seated. The court is now back in session. I hand over the floor to the defense team for Mr. Nguyen Chia to continue his line of questioning. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a few more questions relating to your uh, victim information form. And again, it's just to clarify. On your first victim information form, you have listed your place of birth as Terapeang uh, Tlok Village Chak Commune. Kamchai Mayar district in Preveng province, whereas in your second application uh, that you submitted through DC Cam, it is mentioned that he lives or that he was born in the rural Loi village S Dauntai commune Krai district in Kampung Cham province. And simply to clarify, which of the two places is his place of birth? Is the first or the second one correct? The President, witness, please hold on. Counsel for the Civil Party, you may proceed. But, uh, <coughs> Lawyer Minky, Mr. President, I'm afraid uh, this question is repetitive. Uh, this question has already been asked. Uh, he said that his uh, birthplace was in Preven Province. Then I, uh, Thank you for that additional information. I, uh, it had slipped my uh, attention. Um, Mr. Emun, you have um, spoken about uh, working as a medical doctor at Sector 20, uh, and you stated that you were under the supervision of Comrade Com. And you also stated that you do not know his family name. You only know him by the name of Com. My question to you is, was he, this Mr. Com, was he in charge of uh, the hospital or was he in charge of Sector 20, just to clarify? response. He was not calm. I, I never mentioned calm. Well, calm. I never mentioned calm as uh, the person over there, but actually I did mention Ot. Ot was the <coughs> head of the uh, hospital attached to Sector 20. then perhaps it is good to quote the transcript from last Thursday. It can be found on uh, English page uh, 57 of the transcript and Khmer uh, page 48, 49 of the transcript. And there may be a translation issue, so I'll just read it out to you the way it reads in English. I started working as the medical doctor at Sector 20 under the supervision of Comrade Com. I do not know his family name. I only know him by the name of Com. End of quote. Perhaps the name did not come through correctly, but is there anyone uh, with a name that is similar to Com that may have supervised you at Sector 20? President, witness, please hold on. Uh, counsel for the civil party is on his feet. You may proceed. Counsel Minky, 
Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to uh, clarify uh, the uh, transcript uh, in Khmer. Actually, according to the uh, transcript in Khmer, the name was read as Khm, not Kham. That helps a lot. I thank you. So, that name, could you clarify what the role of Mr. Kim was? The response. Kim was the secretary of Sector 20, and Ot was the head or the director of the hospital attached to Sector 20. Thank you. That um, clarifies that matter. Um, I for now um, do not have any further questions to pose to you, uh, Mr. Amun. I thank you for your explanations and your uh, patience, and I uh, cede the floor with the President's permission to uh, the next defense team. Uh, my national council does not have any follow-up questions, so with your permission, I would cede to the next defense team. The President, thank you. Next, uh, we would like uh, to hand over to Council so for Mr. Insari to put questions to the civil party. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors. Good morning to everyone in and around the court. And good morning, sir. I'm Michael Carnavas, and along with Mr. Angodom, we represent Mr. Insari. Let me pick up where uh, my colleague left off concerning your statement where you said that in 1975 you were assigned to work as a medic to treat people although you had no medical background. And this can be found on Khmer 00, this, the document would be D22 slash 3963, and it can be found on Khmer 00 77, French 00 in English it's 00 or page 7. Now, if we can look at the passage here, you state, in 1975, I was assigned to work as a medic to treat people although I had no medical background. If I dare refuse, I would have been alleged to be an enemy. If I was not able to heal people, I would have been alleged to be an enemy. This is what I experienced in Sector 20 in 1975 under the leadership of Ta Ut. Later, in 1976, the Anka included me as an active member of the regime. In the same year, the Anka sent me to undertake a study in Phnom Penh. I was very scared as my father had disappeared after going for the study as well. During the study course, I stayed at the Cambodian Soviet Friendship Hospital in Phnom Penh. And then 
I'll leave it at that for now. Do you see that portion of your of the statement that you provided in filling out your civil party form where you were assisted by DC Camp? Response. Yes, I do. That's what I wrote. So you wrote it yourself. Someone else did not write it for you. These were your words, that you had no medical background. Response. The writing and uh, the element uh, in the writing are all mine, indeed. All right. In other words, someone did not write it for you and mistook what you were saying and got it wrong. This is what you put down on paper, that you had no medical background. Response. Yes, it is correct. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Then, if we turn to D22 slash 3963 slash 1, and this is only in English, uh, but uh, it's a brief passage, I'll read it. It says here in the report on the civil party application, this was something that others wrote. The applicant stated that even though he had no knowledge about it, in 1975, he was designated to be a doctor in Sector 20, which had the chief name Ta Ut. If he could not cure patients, he would be killed. So, and this was uh, ERN number 0057. 3962. It's only in English, but would that, would you stand by that statement as well that you made or was made for you? The President, uh, Mr. Sobopati, could you please hold on? The co prosecutor, you may now proceed. The defense is returning to this issue of uh, the issue of uh, the lack of medical training. I believe that question was already raised by the Nunchia defense team, and the civil party was very clear. He said that he never retrieved, uh, received any formal medical training, and that he was trained uh, on the job, and that is why he uh, stated that he's never received any official type of. Education, I believe that this point has already been clarified by the civil party. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, if I may very briefly, perhaps the gentleman is unaware that I represent a different client. Perhaps the gentleman thinks that the defense is one entity. We are three different entities. We represent three different clients. And certainly, even though the prosecution of the civil parties essentially are on the same team, on the same side, they cover the topics as well. I'm entitled to explore this. My colleague uh, went into it briefly. I'm entitled to go into it because I'm in, I represent another client, and it goes to the credibility of the gentleman's uh, entire testimony and, in fact, his entire status as a civil party. That's why I'm entitled to go into this.
The President, the objection by the co-prosecutor is appropriate and that uh, the question was repetitive. Therefore, the objection is sustained. Council is now advised to put another question instead. Uh, very well. Uh, let's look at that transcript page uh, 51. This would have been on the 23 of August 2012. Khmer page is 46, English is 56, I mean French is 56, English is 51. You're asked a question on line 21 of the English. Just tell the chamber what you did during the period and where you lived. Answer. During this time, from the 17th of April, 1975, and before that, before that, I was a doctor. After 1975, I remained a doctor. So, from your own words, it would appear that before 1975, or at least before April 1975, you were indeed a doctor by your own admission. Is that correct? Response, yes, it is correct. Now let's focus on the part where you said you had no medical training. Let's look at page 56 of the same date, 56 in English. Khmer is 50 to 51. French is 60 to 61. Here you tell us, I came to Phnom Penh as a servant. I stayed with my granduncle, and I started to acquire some medical skills because my granduncle was a doctor. Let me stop here. Was your granduncle a traditional medical doctor, or was he a formal doctor having received formal education? response to be precise my uncle my grand uncle was a former doctor and he was a doctor during the King Sihanouk regime and I learned on the job from him on some medical skills since then. All right, and just to be a little more precise, did he have a license to practice medicine under that particular regime? If you know. Response. My grand uncle was a doctor at the hospital and as a nephew I would not know whether he got the license but the only thing I know is that he was admitted as a doctor at the Khmer Soviet hospital. Okay, thank you. That was my next question. Which hospital? Uh, thank you very much. And you stayed on the same page that you were about 10 years old when your uncle started teaching you uh, medicine and that you started treating uh, patients in general. Is that right? Response, yes it is. Now on the following page, which would be Khmer page 52, French 61 to 62, and English six, uh, 57, you state that at some point uh, you were sent to Vietnam for training, for a training session. Is that correct? Response. Yes, it is. And could you please explain to us 
what sort of medical training did you receive there in Vietnam and for how long? Response. The training took place for Indeed, after the Khmer Rouge uh, took power, and at that time, Khmer Rouge had, had uh, pro uh, there was shortages of uh, medics. So I was asked uh, through my grand uncle to be trained in Vietnam. Okay, now if you could answer my question, how long were you in Vietnam? And if you could go into some specifics about the type of training you received in Vietnam. The President, uh, Mr. Civil Party, could you please hold on? National Council for the Civil Parties, you may now proceed. Council Kiming Key. Thank you, Mr. President. I really take issue with this question. He said that he uh, was trained uh, by some Vietnamese uh, trainees. I'm afraid that there's kind of misleading information concerning the question whether he was trained in Vietnam, but he said by Vietnamese. Let me, let me quote the transcript, Mr. President, and perhaps my colleague can follow along. As I noted, it was page 52 in, in Khmer, French 61 to 62, English 57, where the witness of the civil party states, and later on, the Khmer Rouge noted that my skills were not good enough to put to use. And after consultation with my father, I was allowed to go training sessions in Vietnam under the direct order from Mr. Sao Pim, the Secretary of the East Zone. Do you recall making that statement, sir? And if so, do you stand by what you stated? Response. I didn't state uh, that, but I think there could have been some misunderstanding in this. I said I went to study Vietnamese, not in Vietnam. Okay, so let me make sure I have it right. Because in your answer here, you say, let me go back a little bit earlier. After leaving Phnom Penh, I was back at home feeding my family and parents. Again, my father used to be the senior person in the Isarak movement. And later on, the Khmer Rouge learned that I was the son of a doctor, a family who had history or who had skills in medicine. So I was asked to work for the Khmer Rouge. And later on, the Khmer Rouge noted that my skills were not good enough to put to use, and after consultation with my father, I was allowed to go training sessions in Vietnam under direct order from Mr. Sao Pim, the secretary of the Eastern Zone. And then further down, after the next question, you say, I was younger than 20. I started medicine and treating patients and at the time, feeding my, par my parents. Now, are you telling us today that Sao Pim was interested in you learning Vietnamese and not medicine? Because from your answer, you're talking about skills, medical skills. So which of the two, sir?
response. The truth answer is that after I arrived at Phnom Penh, and after returning home, uh, Sao Pem, with my uh, father' approval, allowed me to study in Vietnam to study medicine. Okay, thank you very much. Now, if you could please tell us, now that we have you in Vietnam studying medicine, can you please tell us for how long you were in Vietnam? What was the period? Response. I spent uh, three years attending the medical training sessions in Vietnam. I think that's the exact date. I think uh, I may have forgotten, but that's the, that's the appropriate period uh, that I attended the training there. All right. And so after three years of medical training in Vietnam, uh, you returned back to Cambodia, is that correct? Response, yes it is. And so when you say here that you were younger than 20 when you started uh, medicine and treating patients, was this before or after your Vietnamese training, medical training? Response. I stated already that uh, I acquired some medical, informal medical skills uh, when I was at a very young age, when I was living with my grand uncle. All right, well, we'll move on for a second. Uh, let's go on to the next page, which would be Khmer page 53, French 62, English 58. Here you say, you're, qual you're qualifying your answer and you're telling us a little bit more. After leaving Vietnam, my father and Ta So Pim and Ta Kong asked me, asked me to work as a medical doctor for the sector. Is it true that your father so Pim and, and Kom asked you to work as a medical doctor. Response, yes it is. So they did not force you to become a medical doctor or a medic. They asked you, and this was after your three years of medical training in Vietnam plus all the practical training you had received from your granduncle in Phnom Penh. Is that right? Response. I wish uh, to emphasize on this. I say that uh, when I said I attended training sessions, it means that uh, I uh, attended uh, official training sessions. However, I also acquired some skill informally, not through formal education. All right. Uh, can you please tell us, when you return from Vietnam, and you, when you were asked to become a medical doctor up there by Sao Pim and your father, was this before or after April 1975? Response. Could, could, could you please uh, 
repeat the question. If I am mistaken, you may also uh, uh, tell me, but I think uh, I, I didn't quite get your question. Please repeat it. All right. Uh, my apologies. Uh, when you returned from Vietnam and you started working as a doctor for Sector 20, was this before or after the fall of Phnom Penh? Response. When I was a medic uh, in the sector 20, it was before Phnom Penh fell. And can you please tell us how many months or how many years before Phnom Penh fell? Response. I'm afraid I don't recollect this. All right. But it would be. Let me let me just move on. Let's move on to page Khmer page 58, French uh, 67 to 68, English 63. You said uh, here. Uh, I worked after being assigned by the sector to teach medical skills to people. At that time, I was asked to serve the people in general. Can you please tell us whether you started teaching others medical skills before or before going to Phnom Penh in 75 or 76, whenever it was that you went, or afterwards? Response. I studied uh, the medical skills at sector 20 after uh, the fell of Phnom Penh. And, you know, I had to attend these uh, sessions uh, on several occasions, first uh, in the Vietnam and also at Sector 20. But can you please tell us when you began teaching at the sector? Was this before the fall of seven, uh, Phnom Penh or after? Response. I taught medical skills to people both before the fall, of Phnom, the fall of Phnom Penh and also after the fall of Phnom Penh. But uh, my knowledge uh, was uh, little before that, uh, but I acquired more skills uh, after. And it was based on the principle that those who knew more taught uh, those who knew less. All right, thank you. And if we stay on the same page, you go on to say, I had to teach others to have the code of ethics for when they are doctors or medics. And I noted that the policy by the party was good. And I would like to impart the good things to others. I was teaching them to understand their position. If they were doctors, they had to be fully responsible for treating people because they had to make sure that if people died under their treatment, then they would also be responsible for that. And I also taught them the causes of the diseases and how to treat them.
And uh, as I noted, this could be found on page 58 of the Khmer. The time frame would be right below uh, 13 minutes, 41 seconds, th 13 hours, 41 minutes, and 10 seconds. Now, sir, do you recall making that statement? And can you please tell us, when you talk about the policy of the party, was that the policy that you understood it to be before the, uh, the fall of Phnom Penh? The response. Uh, I think I do not really get your question. All right. Let me let me go step by step. You say here that you had to teach others about the ethics of being doctors, and that the policy of the party was good. Was that the policy that, of the party as you understood it before '75? response it was uh, before the fall of 1975 because I know that uh, I noted that the policy was good otherwise I could have never stayed uh, along with them all right and was the policy the same after 1975 as you observed it from having been trained in Phnom Penh. Response. I never taught people any political matters. I used to only teach people on medical s skills. And, and that's what we're speaking about. We're speaking about you teaching medical ethics on how doctors should behave, that they should be fully responsible. So that's what I'm speaking of. So was that the policy after 1975 as you observed it? response. The party's policy before 1975 was decent enough for us to work for. However, I became uh, surprised uh, by the change of policy after the fall of Phnom Penh. Okay, sir, we're speaking about medicine, you being a doctor. So that's what we're talking about, the context of policy as you put it in here. But let me move on. On Khmer page 58 to 59, French 68 to 69, English page 64, right below 13.44.28, you say that after people lear have learned that I acquired medical skill and they would like me to continue this career, and I got my relatives who all had been medical doctors. And as a doctor, as, as having this skill, I was admired by other people, and I was asked to be engaged in treating other people or treating other people on this. So this is my background. Okay? So let me ask you, uh, is this before 1975 or after 1975 that you were admired for your medical skills? Response. That was prior to 1975. All right. 
And if they admired you prior to 1975, did they continue to admire your medical skills after 1975, especially after you went to Phnom Penh and received further medical training? Response. I did not meet people to receive this feedback after that. It, I and other people were intimidated. We were frightened already after the fall of Phnom Penh. Perhaps something was lost in translation. I'm asking whether you, sir, you, the civil party, sir, were admired for your medical skills after 1975. You told us that you were admired beforehand, before 75. Did they continue to admire your medical skills? Before 1975, they admired my medical skills. And after 1975, uh, they continue uh, to uh, use my medical uh, expertise. And even to date, uh, they still uh, come to me for medical um, advice and assistance. All right. Now, when you went to Phnom Penh to receive further medical training, I realized that you had some training, political training, or training on political theory. But sticking to medicine, do you recall how many months of training did you receive in Phnom Penh Medical training, that is. How many months or years? In terms of uh, medical training, as I mentioned in my uh, document, uh, the training session were supposed uh, to be completed in one full year, but actually I only took the course for nine months or so. But I also attended the short training, medical training courses which lasted for two or three months or so. It was not a, a very uh, rigorous uh, training program, but it was uh, to uh, obtain uh, some basic uh, medical uh, skills. During uh, the Democratic Cambodia period, we had to be uh, very skillful in whatever we do, otherwise uh, our life will be at serious risk. And can you please tell us, more or less, how many years had you been engaged in medicine prior to coming to Phnom Penh for that additional training, that is? I do not recall exactly. Well, was it, you told us that you were three years in Vietnam getting medical training. Do you recall how many years after returning from Vietnam did you practice medicine before going for further training in Phnom Penh? Uh, 
after I left uh, Vietnam, uh, I was attached to a hospital of uh, sector 20, but I do not recall the exact date when I started and how long I worked uh, there precisely. All right. Do you recall how many... Do you recall how old you were at the time? I do not recall it either. Do you recall how old you would have been in 1975 or 76? I, I do not recall it, so I cannot respond to your question. All right, and well, can you tell us what year you were born? You, I think uh, you are already aware of that. I am now 60 years old, 61 years old. Work out the math, sir, as to how long you had worked in medicine. Because you stated in your civil party application that you had no background. So if we, and you told us that you started in medicine, getting some training as early as age 10. So by 1975, we're trying to figure out how many years you would have been involved in medicine and how much training or what, what sort of background you would have had by that point. So could you please tell us when you were born? Uh, if we want to find out uh, uh, about the exact age uh, of mine, it's a, a rather uh, difficult because I change it uh, from time to time. But I was born in 1951. All right, well, just out of curiosity, um, is there a reason why you would change your date from time to time? Because one would get the impression that you're trying to deceive others as to your age by doing so. The President, the Prosecutor, you may proceed. Two things, Mr. President. First, I don't quite understand where the defense is heading with this particular line of questioning. And secondly, it does seem to me as if the witness has said that he was born in 1951. Uh, and as time goes by, so a person's age also changes. That seems logical to me. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. President, first of all, it's the issue of veracity, whether he's being truthful as a civil party. I think thus far, my colleague for the Nunchia was trying to establish that there may be other reasons why some of his answers have changed. We now have been told that he changes his date of birth. That was how it was understood in English. So if that is the case, then it begs the question, why would one change their date of birth other than to conceal or manipulate the answer, which again calls into question his veracity. So with that, perhaps I could ask for a clarification from the witness. Does he change his date of birth? And does he, does he represent his, his date of birth to be different to different people on different occasions for different purposes? I would like to respond to uh, this particular question. The prosecution has already uh, mentioned about the 
changes of the age, I have never changed. For example, if I said I um, 51 years old, then uh, I have never changed it. But in terms of the uh, time, I did change. Very well. I'll, I'll stay with that. So if you were born in 51, and if you started medicine when you were approximately 10 years old, getting trained, that is, by the time 1975 comes along, you have anywhere from 13 to 14 years of experience and background in medicine, do you not? Some top response. I did not mention when I started studying, but I only mentioned that I started learning medicine when I when I was mature enough. All right. Well, let me just go back to what you stated uh, to DC Cam and give you an opportunity to revisit that and see whether you wish to stand by it or correct it. Because you stated here, for the purposes of becoming a civil party, in 1975, I was assigned to work as a medic to treat people, although I had no medical background. Based on the answers that you gave in court in previous days and today, do you still maintain that in 1975 you had no medical background? I stand by my uh, statement in the victim information form, and I also stand by with what I uh, have written uh, with my uh, some print uh, fixed. And the defense counsel has already uh, mentioned that I appears to be untruthful, but uh, in order to avoid any uh, suspicion of my truthfulness, I would like uh, to swear in the names of God. Let's look at uh, page look 10. The President, lawyer for the civil party, you may proceed. Uh, some lawyer Minky, Mr. President, uh, with uh, your leave, I would like to uh, suggest that uh, the question be uh, postponed for the time being for the reason that uh, the civil party is now being moved uh, by the question. So it is important that we pause here before we proceed. Uh, we have no objections, Mr. President. The President. The time is now also appropriate for lunch adjournment since uh, the civil party is now not in a good uh, shape in terms of his uh, feeling uh, this morning. So the chamber calls for an adjournment uh, for lunch a bit earlier than schedule and we will resume at 2 p.m. this afternoon. Court officer is instructed to coordinate the room uh, for the witness uh, to rest during lunch break and have him back before the chamber 
before 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And the chamber wishes to advise uh, parties and members of the public that this afternoon and tomorrow, the chamber will resume uh, the uh, hearing at 2 instead of 1.30. Because uh, for this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon, Mr. Ying Sari is to be undergone the medical assessment by the uh, physician. That's why it is the appropriate for us to resume at 2 instead of 1.30. I note the Defence Council is on its feet. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Nguyen Chi, I would like to follow this afternoon's proceeding proceedings from his holding cell as he is suffering from a headache, back pain, and a general lack of concentration, and we have prepared the waiver. The chamber notes the request by Mr. Nguyen Chia through his defense counsel to follow the proceeding by remote means through audiovisual means for the remainder of today's proceedings due to his health reason. He has problems sitting for long times in the court uh, room. For this reason, the chamber grants uh, the Mr. Nguyen Chia leave uh, to follow the proceeding from a holding cell downstairs through audio-visual means for the remainder of today's proceeding. Mr. Nguyen Chia has expressly uh, waived his right to participate directly in this courtroom. However, the chamber requires the defense team for Mr. Nguyen Chia to submit the ch to the chamber immediately the letter of waiver of Mr. Nguyen Chia with his thumbprint or signature. AV assistant is instructed to connect the audio-visual equipment uh, to the holding cell downstairs to enable Mr. Nguyen Chia to follow the proceeding from there for the remainder of today's proceeding. And security guards are instructed to uh, bring Mr. Kiu Sompon and Mr. Nguyen Chia to the holding cell downstairs. And this afternoon, Mr. Nguyen Chia is to remain in the holding cell where he is connected to the audio-visual mean to follow the proceeding uh, this afternoon. As for Mr. Kiu Sompon, he is to be brought before us before 2 o'clock this afternoon. The court is now adjourned. <laughs>